Dave is a banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. Download the app that's helped millions of people get through a financially tough spot. That's Dave, D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve, member FDIC. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Holly Randall Unfiltered. My guest today is a top U.S. escort who you may have seen on a YouTube interview that went viral. That's on Soft White Underbelly. And uh, her vivacious personality and storytelling captivated over 5.6 million people so far. Let's welcome Frenchie. Hi. Bonjour. Hi. Bonjour. How are you? I am good. I made it. Yeah. I made it. I know, on time. And I just also, I feel like the audience should know the air conditioning broke in here yesterday and it is the summer in California, so it's fucking hot as balls in here. So if you see us start to get like sweaty, it's not because like we're on drugs or we're nervous. We're just, it's literally like so fucking hot in here. So just like, please. It's a sauna. It's, it's literally a sauna. <laughs> and if YouTube wouldn't um, ban me, I feel like we would just all take our clothes off. But. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I know. I know One right? inch at a time. One <laughs> <laughs> so how are you? I am good. I am good. I am good. Um, um, could have been a better day. Could have been a worse one, but I made it. So... Whew. You said you had a crazy like last forty eight hours, right? Intense. Do you wanna do you wanna tell us the story? Yeah, because I think it's actually worth it. Okay. It's so crazy. It's one more story to one to my one thousand and one story. You know, mm -hmm. one thousand and two. So I tour as an escort. We tour. This mm -hmm. is we love to actually grow our network. New energy. You a big fish in a small bowl. It's awesome when you tour. So I always have my little, just my, my little destination. You know, I, I kind of collect, collect, collect. But randomly this time, my tour went kind of south. Mm -hmm. But when we, I'm talking south, I mean like southeast, you mm -hmm. know? So on my way, I made a stop. I see my client and I'm smoking my little joint. It must have been 5.30 in the morning. And I'm almost done. There is this little kid. I mean, we're talking about like, a hot mess, this kid. Homeless. Mm -hmm. Tweaking, completely tweaking. When you say kid, like how old are you talking? 27. I'm going to call okay. him a kid, but okay. he's 27. Right. He's, he's a very charming human, by the way. But in the very moment where I saw him, I'm, I had two solutions, really. Am I going to help him or I'm going to just go to bed? Mm -hmm. And he was dehydrated. Where I was, is really hot town. He felt like his skin was completely cooked. I'm like, okay, what are you going to do, Frenchie? Okay. Give him water. And then I talked to him. And I talked to him. And three hours later, I mean, bath, soup, food, everything. It's time to go to bed. I mean, like, at this point, you know, I give him everything I could. Mm -hmm. um, I let him in my room. I told him, you're going to be cool, right? Everything's cool. Okay. But I let him go. You know, I, I went to bed mm -hmm. like a, a selfish bitch. Because um, I left for my tour. Everything is great. And on my way back... I'm making a pit stop again to that exact same town. And it was in my head. Is he okay? Like, mm -hmm. what, what, what is going to happen to this kid? Mm -hmm. I even look around the hotel and uh, I found him mm -hmm. again, but burnt. Fuck. I told myself I'm freaking right. <laughs> but he was burnt everywhere. Like, like sunburned. Everywhere. No more. Like, I don't know. He cannot explain me. He doesn't know. It's like, like an exhaust, like a car. Oh, like third degree him. burns. Oh my God, big okay. time to the flesh. And so I'm like, okay, fuck. You left him one time. The universe is bringing you this, this poor soul again. So right. what are you going to do? So I'm like, okay, get in the car. You know, I brought him to my hotel. I get kicked out of the fucking hotel. They kicked me out. You should see the drama. It was so bad. I had security three times harassing me because... He looks so rough. He has tattoo all over his face. He looks so rough that suddenly they see me, they know me in this hotel. Mm -hmm. Like, what's going on with her? Wait, mm -hmm. wait, wait. And I was playing music and they came to the room and we got kicked out. Mm -hmm. Never in my entire existence I get kicked out. So now I have this kid. 
the plan was, okay, let's get him care at the ER. And I'm going to go. I'm going to, you know, carry on with my life. But they didn't help him at the ER. They wouldn't take him at the ER? Nobody. Two, two different hospitals. So I made an SOS on my Instagram for medicine and antibiotics. They they told him to put Neurospore in those motherfuckers. Are you serious? This is emergency room, you know. You need to put him on a wheelchair. He was limping. Who does that? So I had to take care of him. So now he's in my car. He's in your car right now? I took him with me. I could not leave him. He was going to die. He was like, like if, if the hospital is not going to do that job, who's going to do that job? Wow. Yeah. wow. So I used to rescue like frogs and cats and now I'm in birds. <laughs> and I'm, I'm rescuing a full grown human, but he, he's a good person. He, yeah. You so know this what? is what's happening right now. That's why I'm like, I had to come to this interview. You know, I told you I don't even have my dress. I, like everything yeah. I was supposed to do went completely south. I, d- I had to cancel all my appointments in that town. And I love that town. It's uh, old money, easy mm-hmm. money. It's great money. I had to cancel on $6,000, literally. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even do it. it like, it was it was impossible. At this mm-hmm. point, like, my, my whole focus was on, on rescuing this, this, this human that nobody fucking wants to even look at, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is indicative of like the homeless issue that we have here in LA. And it's actually, you know, Frenchie, it's kind of crazy that you're telling me this story right now because last night, my mom's very similar to you where she always wants to rescue people. And last night we were having dinner and she was telling me about this homeless man in Calabasas that she sees a lot and she like brings some food and water and she was talking to him. And so often, you know, we don't see these people and we just walk past them. We don't get their story. And she was talking to him and he was saying how like he can't get on his feet because he has no IDs. He's lost everything. So like, where does he go from there? You know? And she was asking, she's like, how, like, how does this guy get out of homelessness if he has no resources, if he has no IDs, you know, he can't, he tried to go to the social, he said that he tried to go to the DMV, but like he has no IDs to get his ID. It's just, and I, and I was, you know, and she said that he said that he was a veteran and so my husband suggested that she take him to the VA hospital um, where I think they have a program that can supposedly help him. But I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of these programs are very much underfunded. Mm-hmm. And it's incredibly difficult to get these people out of these situations because so many of them are struggling with drug abuse and mental health issues. And, you know, everybody just, you know, and look, I mean, I'm guilty of it too. I've walked past homeless people and and not stopped oh, to ask them there. You know, like um, we just don't want to see it. If you're tweaking too too much, if you actually feel, if I feel like you're gonna be a danger mm-hmm. for me, I'm going to give money, but I'm not going to really keep going yeah. because I I tried and I like I almost got in in weird situation with homeless. So, but him in particular, I don't know why. Like, yeah, it was something about his aura, or yeah. it wasn't explainable. I don't know. Usually, like I would be, you know on edge to bring a homeless person with tattoos all over. I mean, he looks almost borderline dangerous. He's not dangerous at all. Right. What's dangerous is not to have them. If right. You, yeah. If you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, it's this crazy epidemic in this, in this country. And I don't, I don't honestly know like what the answers are. I just know that, you know, we have to do something about I mean, it. Every, person at least one take one like this not to their wings completely to the to your home but at least you know a beanie glove something against mm-hmm. the environment the environment was eating him alive he was getting cooked by the sun like yeah. cooked his skin is falling off like you would eat a chicken wing and his skin like that like, yeah. yeah so what are what are you gonna do as so far it's been almost three days at this point um, okay so he's just been staying with you He's not doing mess at all. He doesn't have any money. So okay. I know like he's away from it. Okay. I'm so bringing he, him to is my he house. De- there is no drugs in my house. Is so. he detoxing right now? Oh, big time. And I think at this point, I'm his drug. Like I'm his like, yeah. you know, I'm his trip, you know? Yeah, yeah. for sure. I'm going to keep going like this until I told him, you you, 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 you relapse, you do anything that is making me feel, uh, feel uncomfortable, you, you're going to have to go. Yeah. You know? So we pinky swear on that one. We, we talked a lot. I, I feel him. I just, I have intuition. I deal with actual very dangerous men. I had situations that were very dangerous with clients. Mm -hmm. So I know what is a weirdo. I deal with weirdos. Mm -hmm. I know who is dangerous. I deal with dangerous. Mm -hmm. He's not at all dangerous. 
I, I said it, if, I, if it would be a client, he'd be like a very, very sweet, kind client, the lover client. Mm -hmm. You know, the one that doesn't push your boundary. He opened my door. Mm. And he, he, um, he sings to me and my, my ex-boyfriend would not do that. Yeah. And here you have this little homeless kid, nobody talks to him and he's limping and opening my door. I'm like, you don't have to do that, Colin. Yeah. You know, he's like an actual gentleman that people spit on. Right. Yeah. So that was my last almost three days. Wow. I'm a mess. I didn't sleep. It was a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> so, I mean, do you... <laughs> I'm good any... now. Let's talk about sex now. I think I needed my little cry, like because it was such like a, an emotional bomb. Mm -hmm. I took a lot, like I took a lot on me witnessing the hospital, uh, denying him, and it is a problem in America. Mm -hmm. uh, in France, they would have put him in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, at least that. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about it after this podcast. But I do have somebody who's worked in homeless outreach. Um, I can try to get in touch with him and see. The thing is that I just don't want him to feel do. stuck in the program. Or like I don't, don't want him to feel stuck or cage or anything. Or you know what I mean? So far, I got it. Mm -hmm. So far, I got this. I got this. So you say you don't feel like he has to. You don't want to like parse him off to like a program or something like that. Oh yeah, not until it's necessary. Right, right. I mean, I guess we'll just see how my he does. My house is full right? of love. I told him it's my magic house. It's my sanctuary. You can even pick where you want to sleep. You have three different options. You know, you go. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we have to. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a lot of people out there like you. I get help so many times. It's thanks to all the people that spoiled me that I am, you know, confident in where I'm at and comfortable mm -hmm. financially. So it's only fair to give back what I'm going to do. Bring my money with me in my in my thumb. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, no, it's you true. Give back, you know, because it, it, it's monopoly. You, you lose some, you gain some. Mm -hmm. It's the purpose of life. You're not going to keep it tight like that for, yeah. for what? Yeah. Wow. You know? That's amazing. Yeah. So I do have sex in three days. Yeah. Clearly not. Clearly not. <laughs> okay. I mean, should, should we talk? Should we talk about you? Should we talk about, should we talk about the sex? Yes. Anything. Anything. All right. Um, okay. So Frenchie, you said that your life began at 26. So I, I want to start there. Yeah. Um, what happened when you were 26 that cook started this new life? Oh my God. Like your same thing, crazy story. So let me again, the universe. The universe likes to, you know, like play dodge, dodgeball, uh, mm -hmm. dodgeball with me for sure. So, um, but I divorced. I was with a bad, uh, really, really bad relationship, really bad dude. Just uh, it was time to mm -hmm. go. As soon as I left him, ascension. So that was good to cut the chain because mm -hmm. when you cut the chain, boom, finally mm -hmm. you can bloom. I finally bloomed, and I was working at a bank, and my trainee, the girl I trained, is the one that brought me to the swinger party in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Called the swingers, the pleasure zone, it's the swinger zone, yeah, swinger zone too. Mm -hmm. the, the pleasure zone parties, mm -hmm. the PC parties. And so I'm being brought to what I thought was a lingerie party. It was definitely not a lingerie party. But even I think if she would try to explain me swinger party, I would have not get it. I was vanilla. I was, right. Yeah, I was not even ready for this. But once I had my peek into in it, uh, yeah, it was the beginning of the American dream for sure. So I got picked up by this couple at that very party. And not knowing, they actually brought me home and paid me. I was not I was not going to get paid. I was going for free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a good little slut, okay? <laughs> so wait, did they give you money after you yeah, guys? it was after. They were just like, here's some money? Right. And you were just like, why? No, it was an why? envelope. It was an envelope. So right before the taxi arrives, mm -hmm. fancy, fancy, the envelope. The thing is, okay. We took a lot of pictures that night. Mm -hmm. So in my head, the envelope is the pictures that they just printed. I'm mm -hmm. like, this guy is the best husband ever. Mm -hmm. He printed the freaking picture for me. Mind you, we fucked all night. We did some hum hums that night. Actually, we can talk about that night. That was cool. So <laughs> when they brought me back, I mean, I was not really a big drinker. Uh -huh. Okay. And the tequila, I mean, Jesus Christ, I was so tipsy. And when we arrived at the house... We talked for, for a good moment and they right. showed me their playroom. They had a full playroom and it was this arch like this. Like, what is that? You know, like a cage or something. I'm like, they like, they told me, you're going to see later. Now I was actually scared. I'm like, okay, are, are those weird cop type of couple that's going to keep me in a cave or something? Yeah. Because what is this arch? And I see the dildos and I see, I see like this, this room is, is just like inspiring me, like uh, something I've never seen. Yeah. <laughs> so after really 
getting comfortable with each other, we go to that room. He's like, now I'm going to show you. So he tied her up. He actually tied her up. So it was this cage, like this weird arch, mm -hmm. where he actually tied her up. And he put a um, um, strap on on me with a mm -hmm. little tiny insert. Mm -hmm. And he made me fuck his wife just like that, you know? I mean, that was the first time I even seen a strap on. And the thing, the strap on, you're not connected to the dick. So when you're fucking and the dick comes out, just kind of keep going. Not, yeah. It, it wasn't. It's, strap ons are not that easy to use. Like they terrible. take some practice. Yeah, for yes. sure. So imagine my first time. Yeah. Oh, plus it was a small insert. I'm pretty much, I'm pre pretty sure it was for a butt or something. It was so, so I remember looking at it and clearly feeling what it felt for a man to look at it. A small dick. Yeah. <laughs> it was just this little tiny thing. Yeah. But uh, no, they made me do some, some crazy stuff. But she was tied up. He cracked her penny. He put it in her mouth and gagged ball her. And then we, we did all, all type of dirty stuff. But he left her like that and fucked me on the floor. And that I was like, coming, coming, coming. It's just orgasm, orgasm, orgasm. Uh -huh. That was so kinky and so like just deviant. Yeah. But in a way that I'm like, it was new to me. Uh -huh. And I liked it. I'm like, okay, maybe I'm weird actually. Uh -huh. Maybe I like I, what I liked, I didn't know I liked. Right. So this is why when I had my pinky toe, I'm like, wait, I had three orgasm out of this night and money. So again, when they pay me, I don't know. It was a picture. And as a matter of fact, I didn't even know it was money until way after. Yeah. Hours and hours and hours after. So yeah. No, no, no. It was not a money thing at first. Yeah. Right. So what was your reaction when you opened the envelope and you saw money? Mortified. Were you, so you were, you were embarrassed? Like, I, I, like, super confused. Mortified is not the, big, the, the, the right word. I think confused. Like confused, confusion like, really took over me. Like, mind you, we got intoxicated. Did he give me the wrong envelope? Are they yeah. going did did, to think I, I stole from them? So I called them like, hey, hey. Like, I didn't steal from you guys. <laughs> like, and so I'm talking about the picture. Like, hey, you guys. Why there is, you know, money instead of the picture? Yeah. They don't, they, they're confused. I'm confused, you know. So now they're even more confused. Finally, we... Getting everything right, like French, you weren't you working? No, <laughs> no, not at all. I was not working that night. I yeah. was at a party. Simply, that yeah. changed the whole direction of absolutely everything. So you were like, I can have sex, have a good time, and I can get paid for it. And it was like a revelation. In one night, I made what I would make in one month. So it was ridiculous. Can I ask you how much it was? It was 2,500 bucks. Wow. Which at the bank, this is what you make with commission. I mean, maybe a little bit more at the bank. Come on, a little bit more at the bank. But yeah. are you kidding me? Um, I was in debt. <laughs> so yeah. I could pay all my debt and go to BB and buy like a bunch of BB clothes. So that was, <laughs> that was, that was quite awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So where'd you go from there? But I kept going, but not like that. I mean, I was... That's funny, when you tamed, really, you open the cage, you still stay in the cage. It's, it's, it's very crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. And you see it with animals, too. They're so mm -hmm. used to be in the yeah. cage. They actually have a hard time, like, is this for real? Yeah. You know? So it was kind of like, is this for real? Mm -hmm. So I would go every last Saturday of each month, only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was kind of like something where, oh, my, it's like that one time in the month where I can, like, switch, mm -hmm. you know? And slowly but surely, I became Francesca. This is, mm -hmm. this is what created her really mm -hmm. her yeah so when you say you would go once a month you would go to this lingerie party yeah. or you would go back to this couple very no very similar the couple i saw them a couple of times right after that but then they refer me to other ones what was awesome is i'm a horrible hustler mm -hmm. so all i had to do is just not do nothing you know you mm -hmm. you there with your lingerie they approach you they already kind of know who i am at this point okay and it was just like effortless Effortless. I didn't know how to negotiate. They're like, we're going to take care of you. Don't worry. Like, you, you become a complete sugar baby for the couple. They, I really, really love the dynamic. It was really healthy. Actually, very healthy dynamic. Completely. So they helped you get set up and they, did they negotiate your rates? They were almost like your managers in a way? No, not at all. No? no, they just told the other couple, you should really, really. Uh, okay, gotcha. Oh, no, not at all. No, 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 no. It was nothing like that. It was just a referral. Like, yeah. French is fun because everybody talks in the sugar parties. Right, right, This couple right. is like, oh, yeah, so small, like, oh, it couldn't get hard. Like, like I mean, you, you should see, like, the amount of yeah. information. I mean, it's pretty fucked up, you know? Yeah. Like, you better you better get your erection, you know? Otherwise, everybody's going to know that you didn't, you yeah. know? So It's kind of the same thing in porn, to be honest. Same, same, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, exactly. But in porn, it's... Yeah, you see it video. on video. <laughs> Over there is rumors, you know? Yeah. So, it's not really proven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, where I was going with this? Wait, wait, wait. Did, 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 like, so, well, how you started. So then in terms of like your rate, did you just, were you just like, okay, well, I'm just going to charge the same amount that I got I paid from these of, other no, people? Or? 
it was pretty much uh, give me whatever you think it's fair. So it was always okay. always more than I thought. So it was oh, oh, oh my god, okay. plus a lot of the swingers donation based. Yeah, Decide on like whatever you want your like donation our, based yeah, yeah, to be. Yeah. Each other. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's how I started. That's that's fair. Mm-hmm. Um, now, you spent some time working in brothels. Yes. Um, and you've been very open about your thoughts on that industry. What was your biggest issue with the Nevada brothels when you worked there? Uh, many. Oh my God, so many. I mean, it's a lot to talk about, you know. Um, it's only they give us a, a legal platform where a lot of illegal stuff are going on, mm-hmm. you know. So that's like... Oh, if, defeating the purpose of giving us a legal platform if mm-hmm. a lot of shit is going to happen like this and nobody checks i mean nobody checks mm-hmm. no not one person ever checked actually yeah homeland security homeland security on first of april so I, I even thought during the lineup and they put the badge it was three of them badges and everything mm-hmm. i thought it was an actual april fool so that's the first thing i said in the lineup that's an april fool no 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 and plus i had an accent first one interrogated it boom for me yeah where they came into the brothel mm-hmm. and they came yeah and it was an african girl so her name was her name was tanya no kenya kenya from kenya excuse me Kenya, Russia from Russia, Frenchie from France. So they were like, they were uh, like, it was clearly a joke for the, for the, for the Homeland Security. They checked on me first and I just explained them, listen, I, I do have an accent. I was born here. You know, I'm as American as an American, you know, it's just that my accent is a little thick. That's it. So they let me go. But then they, yeah, yeah every single person they, they interrogated. So what was the reason for coming into the brothel? Making sure that uh, we were legally uh, oh, you were yeah. working so legally the f- with a working visa and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and you because I know that in Nevada you have to have a special license. Oh my god, big time! Yeah, Just on a weekly like a police basis, license, right? Yeah, uh huh. You go to the sheriff to get it gotcha. on a weekly basis. If you don't pass the the medical, uh, you cannot stay in the brothel. You you have to pass the the, the STD every single week, which is crazy when the you you. you, you Girls bring STD. They have to pack up and go. And they say, yeah, well, I have an emergency. We know you just didn't pass your STD test. Right. Because they do bear. They do bear stuff. Yeah. Right. And they're so, not supposed to. Not at all. Okay. Even the BJ. Even the BJ is supposed to be um, covered. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 We hired, um, when I w- went to Amsterdam, right out of high school, when gr- my graduation present was going to Europe, and my boyfriend and I hired um, a sex worker in Amsterdam. And yes. I remember she put a condom on my boyfriend before she blew him. And I remember, I'd never seen that before. I was mm-hmm. like, whoa. It's, part of me was like, ew, that's so gross. And then the other part of me was like, wow, she's really responsible. <laughs> yeah, I think it's by law. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, um, that, so you're going to have secret shopper actually checking on that, which is crazy. Imagine like that's the best job in the fucking world for a man. You're going to be a secret shopper and check if the girls are going to, uh, you know, follow the law. I don't think they go all the way to the BJ, but they're going to see if, you know, if you actually go for it, the the the, the bros will get fined. Or the girl, I'm not even sure what is the repercussion, to be honest, actually. I don't do that, so I don't know. So, okay, so so you have a, so yeah, because you have this at, you know, people posing as, or minors pretending to be older, and then they go and like try to buy cigarettes. And if you buy at supermarkets, and if you sell them cigarettes without same the thing. ID, same thing. So they go in without, and then they try to get the woman that they hire to do illegal things, such as n- no condoms, right? What else would they be looking for? That's it, really. Or if you try to take the, the clientele out of the house. So that would be Dennis's. So that would be a different type of uh, secret shopper. Dennis would send secret shopper to check if we would be willing to take the clients out of the house, cutting the commission with the... Oh, and, like, okay. So in, but and, that's his own... Uh-huh, that was his that's own not way. the government. No, but right. that was his own way to, you know, make sure that we're not doing that. The government would check for um, just if, if we use condoms, of course. Right. I think that's what they would check. If we're legal to work there, obviously, and if we use condom in... That's, that's really all is required. Nothing is really required. There is, it's very minimal what we are being asked, you know. Right. A lot of girls that had herpes, they could work there, you know. Yeah, yeah like you can work with herpes there. This well, the problem with herpes is that it's not curable, so. Yeah, you, you had staff, staff infection, and the girls with staff infection, they had that's, to leave. That's, like, that was ridiculous yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At Cherries, I had a bed, um, bed bug bite, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, I mean, really bad, you know, like in a, in a line like this, you know, so mm-hmm. uh, it's just not sanitary at all. No. no, not like that. It was a lot going on, but going back to the, to the Bunny Ranch, which I didn't stay long enough, I went to the Love Ranch, which is a mile away. It was way more tranquil mm-hmm. there because Dennis would not go. I didn't like Dennis. I, he's, it was too much with him. Right. And we're heavy. talking about Dennis Hoff, by the way, for people who yeah, didn't Hoff. catch on because we didn't say his full name. So. And okay. so... You know, he, he he was clearly a sex addict and he was uh, getting his dose on a, on a daily, mm-hmm. 
right. several times a day. Yeah. Yeah. And he would pick and choose. And it was this whole dynamic that he does, that he did. And he got me mental. I, 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 I don't know why I stayed so long. Because maybe I rotated. It wasn't all the time there. Mm -hmm. I rotated two weeks at a time, two weeks out, two weeks in, sometimes mm -hmm. a month off. I couldn't do it towards the end. I was, I was just seeing too much. Everything that was going on there was just mm -hmm. not okay. Yeah. I had to go. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk about Frenchie venturing off on her own. And I believe she's fully independent now. Um, and all the questions that you ever wanted to know um, about an escort and the lifestyle. So hang tight. We'll be right back. If you're living paycheck to paycheck or struggling to make ends meet, it can be really stressful when unexpected expenses come up. And let's face it, with inflation and crazy gas prices, everything is more expensive right now. Now, Dave can help you get out of a pinch when you really need it. Dave is a banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. And that can be a lifesaver. When I was just starting my photography business on my own, I was always just on the cusp of zero or negative in my bank account. Factor in unexpected business expenses, like the time I left my camera out in the rain, or the light that suddenly caught fire on set, or my equipment van literally dying on the way to set, I would often find myself really strapped for cash. I wish Dave had been around then. With no interest or credit check needed, it would have saved my butt. So if you're starting out fresh on a new path or today's crazy living expenses are just really stressing you out, join the millions of people who have already tried Dave to get them through a tough spot. Download the Dave app from the App Store right now. That's Dave, D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve, member FDIC. Hey guys, we are back. We had to take a quick fan break. <laughs> it's getting very, very hot in here. So Frenchie, um, so you were working in brothels and I assume now you're fully independent, right? You no longer work in brothels. How did you make that transition? A little bit by little bit, you know, just uh, just the logic of mm -hmm. it. It was way less toxic of an environment because it's not just uh, Dennis that was creating uh, a toxic environment. It was also the other girls, you mm -hmm. know, like the caddy, they test you, they put bleach in your shampoo, uh, they, they, they slash your tire. I mean, it was intense. It was super hostile, very wow. hostile, you know, and it could like be very like hood ghetto, you know, so yeah. Uh, one one little energy, one one little human there could completely switch the whole dynamic of the house. You could have a really good dynamic. One arrives, drama, drama, drama. Mm -hmm. Horrible, horrible. Yeah. yeah so um, it just made sense. It just made sense. Mm -hmm. You know. So how do you how do you get? So do you have like regular clients that you work with pretty frequently? Yes, I have like a, the whole world is my playground. So I started working internationally. You know, traveling around. So. My big one was Japan. I loved Japan because mm -hmm. they have a whole culture there that I really enjoy. That's why I have my geisha and, and I actually met one, a real one there, and we, we made friends. I stayed in Tokyo, in Shinjuku, and uh, I would be working at the Ginza in the hostess bar. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 you don't have much to do. Mm -hmm. they pay you you have to just make them drink so you have little drinking games that you do I, I was coming up always with little I don't know little ideas but I'm a gymnast so I would do handstands I mean the Japanese they entertain with nothing like nothing you know like your mm -hmm. little thing like they do a little magic for, for Japanese and you see they, they literally faint you know <laughs> so um, I would do a little handstand 100 bucks at a time I had some time my, because I was so like lively in that in that mm -hmm. hostess in that hostess bar that everybody wanted to book me so the guys had to literally wait for an hour another hour mm -hmm. to 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 get me and i would get so many hundred bucks just with handstand and doing little silly stuff mm -hmm. you know so, so you mentioned a hostess bar can you tell us a little bit about that what is that yeah so it's it's, it's it's pretty much how you just like the, the they have the kitty bar then same thing you mm -hmm. you you go you go see the cats so you pay the entrance the entrance fee and then you have like upgrades if you want to pet them and just mm -hmm. same thing so you arrive and you you so you pay a flat fee mm -hmm. okay for to the house we get seventy percent of that the house is getting thirty percent and then all the drinks it's all for us every single drink is we get the, the drinks but we have what we call the dohan and this is what we really try to do the dohan so it's the out call. Okay, you're going to do an out date pretty mm -hmm. much with him. And it's awesome. So 
the dohan, they give you numbers in the hostess bar. They tell you that you need to have two dohans a week. But I had seven. I mean, I had like one a day. Mm -hmm. It was easy to have a dohan. So once you have a dohan, they pay a higher fee to the house to get mm -hmm. you out of the house. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they, that's why they don't want you to cut the house. And the mama-san, she's it's very strict. You can tell it's very Japanese, very rude, mm -hmm. you know? So... Uh, the, the, she would literally call the client a couple of times to see where we are, everything calling me, I have to report. I mean, it's, it's very square there. So when you go on a Dohan, it's cool. It's a couple thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. And then if they want to have an intimate, intimate time with you, mm -hmm. I mean, I was paid all the way to 30 grand. So the thing is, I made so much money in Japan. I had to leave my money. I couldn't fly back with me. Right, you can't fly back with more than $10,000. Okay, so I had literally sent by the universe this super awesome dude. They have a base, a military base. I go to festival. I went to this festival in Tokyo. And boom, I meet him. He's American and he's in, on the base. And we made friends. We made friends. I'm like, okay, do you trust him, trust him enough to leave him all that cash? Well, yeah. So I had to go back to Japan again and again to fly back a little bit by a little bit. <laughs> but wait, every time you go to Japan, are you working? So are you making more money? So you're adding more money to that pile? Yeah, well, of course. So then like, you're never going to get the money back, no, no, right? No, 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 excuse me, excuse me. No, 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 no. When I go back to, to Japan uh -huh. to, to get the money back, uh -huh. no, no. It was not to work, to add on to the pile. Okay, so you're you not... Were, you were telling me about like, the already pile. No, no, no. Okay. okay, so you're not... When you go back to Japan, you no, don't No, it was work. to actually... Go back with right, it. No, okay. no, no. So when I went to Japan, it was usually on my way to Thailand. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't work in Thailand because, you know, obviously it's, it's a little bit. Actually, no, I'm lying. I had a few clients there. I had a few clients there. But uh, on my way to Thailand, I would always make sure that I was, you know, on my way back to Thailand. Mm -hmm. Go to Tokyo, get the cash back. Mm -hmm. on my way back so mm -hmm. no I didn't add up to the pile because gotcha. no, I, I didn't keep working the thing the problem with the mama-san is you have to commit like you have to commit for like I think it was like a month minimum I stayed like 12 days or something and then I left you mm -hmm. know so then you have to find another hostess bar because the mama-san you betrayed her because oh. the commitment you broke the commitments yeah. So they, do they ultimately want you to stay the entire time, like more than a month, like forever? No, the month is your commitment. And the month can, is your commitment. They, they are pretty hurt when you break it. So you can okay. literally. So you contract for a month, but if after a month you're like, you know what, I'm done. Oh, then, yeah, you're not forced, then, come on. No. Right, right. No, no, I know. But then if you decide to leave after a month, they're a little bit offended. Yes, and especially they if may you go not, to another bar. And they may not take you back. Ever. Right. I a bright thing, they pride there. Yeah. They pride and they, they, they square. There is, they, there is this whole culture that I still try to figure out. But mm -hmm. I didn't go enough. I worked two times. So I went on two trips mm -hmm. to work. And this is when it went out of freaking control. Because my first trip, I was trying to figure it out. My second trip, I already knew what I was doing. Right. You know, so this is my second trip where I banged a lot. Okay, a lot. Mm -hmm. I remember it was ridiculous. This is guy. He was so sweet. He brought me to the mall. We went to the restaurant. He brought me a lot of stuff. And I went to this, this hotel. It's like a, I guess like an hour hotel, but it's really nice. Like it was like this round bed and you, you get the room by the hour. Mm -hmm. I bet he stayed like 15 minutes to give me 10 grand. Right there. That was a problem wow. to fly back with. I couldn't yeah. fly back with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I, from what I understand from other like in-person sex workers that I've spoken to, the actual sexual encounter itself is a very small amount of the time that you spend with the person. Most so. of it is like, conversation and like you know these people just want someone to i mean obviously they want somebody to be intimate with but they also just want someone to spend time with it's part of the equation yeah the, the sex bit. i feel in a way it's the easiest part yeah like reassuring the guy that is you know completely panicked you know to the point that he doesn't have a boner that takes work like that like that's that's the, the not the easy part right yeah. there so there is like a lot of things that are a little bit more harder than just having sex right you know yeah. But yeah, entertaining a weirdo, like you suddenly, like you're not on the same page. I had some guys literally telling me who he was voting for, for example. And I was just like, okay, let's focus. It's going to be, it's yeah. going to be a little bit difficult. Let's not talk about politics or religion, okay? Yeah. I usually try to really avoid those subjects with them. So I don't really, really want to kick them out. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah, I'm short fuse for stupidity. Yeah. yeah. So now who, like how many, do you have like regular clients that you see most of the time? Or are you still very much like meeting new people all yeah. the time? So but same thing, like I have my, my regular, my best of regular. And when I tour, I always have, you know, the new faces. So I have the old faces that mm -hmm. book me and the new faces. So the network just keep on growing. You mm -hmm. Even if somebody really doesn't really book you again, you just 
Right. It's endless. I mean, the sky is the limit. It's impossible to not have a job yeah. in this industry. Yeah. It's zero chance. So how do you screen for clients? Or actually, wait, so how do they find you? But you have to uh, advertise on different platforms. Okay. You know, so there is platform available for you. Like plenty, oh my God, like 12, 13, 14, maybe even. Mm -hmm. Same thing, the platform has, they have levels. So mm -hmm. you have like the low level where it's like a list crawler. Mm -hmm. Those list crawler, man, they suck. I mean, you're going to have like, the scammers, everything and anything. A lot of girls trafficked, underage. Mm -hmm. I mean, you gotta have a lot of bullshit. Kind of like Backpage, remember the Backpage scandal? Mm -hmm. Okay, well you have a lot of like, little mushroom site like that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They make us verify our age and everything, but you have a lot of underage girls. It's very easy to just have your girlfriend, you know, show the ID, show the paper, and then it's really your account. So mm -hmm. they don't really, like, I mean, it's so much that they're doing to make, really verify it's you. And the, mm -hmm. I, I see rings, literally like Russian rings, Korean, huge, huge really? rings of Korean, Korean. The, is they called the K-girl, the K-girls. Yeah, a huge ring of Korean. It's like mind blowing. Uh, so Russian, Korean for sure. Um, Definitely the Thailandese, the Vietnamese in the, the, the parlors, the massage. That's how they find people. So you have different sites for different things. Mm -hmm. Then you have like the nice, nice website like Eros. For example, mm -hmm. Eros, you're going to pay your advertisement a lot of money. Like I think like up to $1,000 a, a, a month to be on Eros. Because mm -hmm. you have different type of advertisement. You can be the golden girl, the silver girl, you know, the girl of the day. So you mm -hmm. pay for all that. So on Eros, you literally score your VIP clients. And then mm -hmm. I have a few more platforms that I'm not going to reveal because people don't know. Right. Understood. Deserve. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They, yeah. They're very, they're very good platform. Yeah, where you can score really big, big, big VIPs for sure. Okay. Huge clients and amazing human too. Yeah. You know, not just big money, like cool fucking gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. That respect us. Yeah. So what kind of, what are your clients generally like? Like what is the average guy that you see, what is he usually like? So usually it's the disposable income gentleman, you know? Mm -hmm. So usually, you know, clean cuts. I'm not going to have a guy with rotten teeth or, you know, I'm not going to have somebody completely because people ask me, what is the, the ugly or what the old, what is the fat? I'm like, I mean, I get the ugly and the fat, you know? I mm -hmm. mean, like in the, the old every once in a while, but it's not just that, it's a mix. It's everything. I literally have like kids, like 21, 22. I'm like, baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no like at this point like i'm gonna feel like you're my son you know but yeah. i have you know i have every age i try not to take them too old because you feel like a disconnect there is and even like visually and in the even in the uh, it just doesn't go together anymore. Mm -hmm. like it shocks me one in particular he borderline looked like my grandpa and it was like extremely difficult couldn't even do eye contact he actually reviewed me he left me such a fucking bad review and like bro like you he looked like my grandpa. He was, I couldn't look at him. I couldn't. I was very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And it's at this time where you don't know how to tell him, like, listen, I'm just, let's just not go through the, the session. Mm -hmm. Have went, you ever had to do that? Oh, no. I, I'm super good at it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Get out. Get out. Get out. Yeah. Yeah. I give them the money back. Go now. Yeah. I don't feel you. I don't like you. You are at my place and you are making me feel uncomfortable. I do not go to your house to make you feel uncomfortable, so I dare you. Yeah. I usually, that's how I deal with it. I usually reverse it. What are you doing to me right now? What if I do it to you? And usually like they like they have little, you know, switch in their head like, wait, actually, yeah, am I being, I, mean, I'm, I am being fucked up right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I don't have time to waste. Right. No. So how do you screen your clients? The screening. So the screening is important. Back in the day, we didn't have much. And so it was a lot of the intuition. Mm -hmm. A lot of the intuition. You had the bad boy report or Google. But now you have, I don't even know if I should, I don't, should I even say it? Because now the guys are going to know and, shoot. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I should though. So, ladies, Mr. Number, get the Mr. Number app. You should actually, yeah. So, Mr. Number is amazing. At this point, you can store so many, so much, so much data about mm -hmm. the clients. So, you check Mr. Number and you'll be surprised what you find on there. Okay, it's so scary. it's a way for women to communicate with each other who have Watch worked with out. that client. Yeah, I mean, awesome. that's, that's what Backpage used to serve for so many sex workers. And that was one of the big complaints about SESTA FOSTA and how it took away from sex workers. And they were saying, you know, our, li our work is so much more dangerous now because we can't, rev you know, warn other girls about potentially dangerous clients. Mm -hmm. Like it took that ability to share that information away. Well, now we can. Yeah. So Mr. Number, yeah, yeah, usually, I mean, if you have to, a report to, to make, 
it's usually the app. Eighty percent of the providers uh, are using this this app. So at this mm -hmm. point, this app is full of information, mm -hmm. full of information. Sometimes be careful, though; it can be very misleading. Mm -hmm. For example, I was about to leave a very good review for a client, like Safe to See, great gentleman. He offered me flower. He's a really amazing client. I saw, I saw him multiple times. Well, I go and I see two report. Watch out! He busted my nose. Watch out! He raped me. Wow. Trying to cock block him or not sure. Yeah. Why she would like, so then the app get abused because now this man looks like he's an abuser when really he's like this the, 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 the sweetheart. So you, now what I do, I still use the app, but I, I let them know like, listen, I am not really comfortable right now to see you. I need a deposit from you. Mm -hmm. I need to FaceTime. So the FaceTime is awesome because I can really feel you. I can see your demeanor. Mm -hmm. I can see your body language. There is something about the energy of somebody. Even behind the screen, you can feel like there is mm -hmm. just something off or something flowy. Like yeah. we're flowing right now. Okay. If it's flowing right now, we're going to flow during the session. So right. I'm, I FaceTime. Personally, I like the, the, the verification like that. So there is different little things that I do to, to make sure I'm safe. And so far, I mean, I had like, really like I can count them on my hand, like five situations and one really dangerous, one really extremely that was like borderline, like a close one, a really close one. Uh, and then just situation. I'm not going to say problem, but situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I handled it. Can you tell us about any of those situations? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, I talked about it in the other interview, that's why. But the, the gentleman came with a, with a herbal tea. Oh. So he comes at you as older gentleman, mind you. That's why I cut corners. I'm like, okay, you know what? Very a con. Because if you can fool me all the way to my room, you're pretty, pretty good. Mm -hmm. You're pretty fucking good. Yeah. yeah. So the age was, uh, you know, pushing 60. Mm -hmm. Everything added up. He arrived and nothing added up. As soon as you arrived, just nothing added up. It, it was just something about his energy. The age and the attitude did not match. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so why aren't you having an attitude of a gentleman? Because I'm so used to men, a certain, you know, energy. And this one was off. So I know something is bad. And when he was in the toilet, I checked the app, which I should have done. Mm. Four reports. Watch out, ladies. You rub me. Push out, you cut me. But this time it's a real one. It's not like a, oh no. Yeah. For, because what I look is the different dates. There be some girls, they like, they would bombard the same day. Trying, right. But that's clearly over the time, over the, the course. Yeah. And if it's from a lot of different women. I am so panicked at this point. I am shit scared. The thing is, I, I take my phone. The thing, he sees it on video. So I think at this point, he was scared. He didn't know what was about to happen to him. I think he must have wondered if people were about to jump him or get arrested. You should see his demeanor because I have this five-minute video. Uh, he, his voice completely switched. I, I never had such a, a horrible, like a bad date with someone. Like it was mm -hmm. like extremely bad. Yeah, extremely bad. He was trying to hurt me, but like physically with his dick, you know, I had to like really clearly stop him. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was about to... Uh, to, to I don't know, break my cervix or something. I don't know what the fuck he was trying to do. So no idea. when you tried to push him off, oh, actually, you, no, he... I literally like, like he was ramming me. Like he was like, bam and bam and bam. Like he was like, and his face, take this, take this. So it was like me, like literally like, like what the fuck? So I, when he was ramming me, I just literally uh, grabbed his stick like this and showed him like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm 95 pounds. Are you trying to break me or something? When, so we finished, thank you God. He was like extremely fast. He must have been so excited with this little scenario in his head. Because yeah. he's, he's patiently waiting for you to, to fall asleep. He's patiently waiting for you to fall asleep and to do fucked up shit because... Let, let's go step by step. So I'm feeling this guy is just like, he's dangerous. Okay, mm -hmm. the way he talks, the, his attitude. We on the hour mark, I have a couple of hours with him. I'm like, I'm not saying one more hour. Mm -hmm. There is no fucking way. He's in the toilet. I check the app. I find out that he's dangerous. Perfect. Get the fuck out. So when I kicked him out, then I was really, really shook up. Like, it was crazy. And I put him on the forum. Ladies, I have him at one point on the video. I, I, I screenshot, he looks so guilty. This motherfucker, exactly like the face you need to, to fucking see here. Boom. Mm -hmm. I had 15 messages from different, different girls. Like, you should see, like, the, the, you should see. I can show you the threads. It's insane what he does. Once you, you, you fall asleep, one, you thought she started her period. After a date with him, no, you 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 got fucked so crazy that you bled. That's what happened to you. He's a real crazy man. Once you drink that tea, you fucked. So he drugs girls. Absolutely. And then he rapes them. And then he robs. He takes everything. Not just his money, everything that you have. So everything. he robs you. Yeah. 
and he rapes you mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. as a matter of fact when he arrived it was this whole dynamic because like I mean, but you never drank the tea never I had in my hand at one point I had in my hand I had in my hand yeah I had in my hand why do you think you didn't drink it oh. you just didn't I even texted him before he arrived he I asked him to bring vodka he said he couldn't bring one, uh, the vodka and I'm like it's okay The uni- it's, I, I told him it's okay the universe doesn't want, me to, doesn't want me to drink and when I went back to that mess I'm like crazy wow that's really scary it's like i really knew yeah like it was science like don't drink don't drink just don't drink when you arrived he leaves the money okay he leaves the money but i remember just this burning language is just so off like usually the clients he give it to me you know Mm -hmm. no like i'm gonna put my wallet on it and he had this this just this way so at one point when i did get to the money finally and you know he's right behind me looking at where i'm putting it so okay i'm like Okay, yeah. But because I don't know yet, there is this battle inside of me, you mm-hmm. know? And so, and then I was right. This is when I know my intuition is uh, is for real. Like, woman intuition is for real. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. And especially in your case, you have to be really careful. I have an amazing intuition. Yeah. I know within a few seconds. Have now. you always had the intuition or do you think this job I built always you? did, though. I did, but now, like, he made, he made the, the intuition, like, yeah, really amplified it because I, the amount of... of People I deal with. Because right. it's not just the booking, like the, the, the one-on-one with the client. is on the phone, like the, them approaching yeah. you. So that alone is, it touched me so much. You know, mm-hmm. just the, the, are you available? The guys that just start uh, texting you, you're never going to meet them, but that touched me so much about weirdo. Okay, this is the, the guy that is serious. That's a fantasy booker. Uh, that's a waste of time. That's a no-show. That's an address collector. We have all that address collector, picture collector, uh, fantasy booker. We have all these names. Yeah. And it, it's part of the job. You have no choice. So fan, so an address collector just wants your address, yeah. but he's he won't not going to show up that day. No show, no what's call. What's he going to do with that address? Exactly. That's scary as fuck. That's why yeah. I always give cross streets or different things or deposit. As long as you give me the deposit, you have my address. No so problem. you do see people at your home? Yeah. You, yeah. you don't see people in hotels ever? Or yeah, does it when just I depend tour. on... When I tour. Okay. Or I go on out, out call to their place or their suite. Or mm-hmm. Usually I, I usually tell them if, if your place is not as cool as mine, I'm not going to go. Mm-hmm. You come to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, but yeah, if it's a nice little mansion or something, yeah, it's good, you know. Yeah. Do you have um, things at home to protect you if something goes down? No, I have my brain. Okay. I'm going to do anyway. Yeah. You know, like by the time even if I reach to pepper spray or a knife, it can be written against me. Now yeah. I'm having weapon that can be actually used against me. Yeah. If the guy really, first, first he takes balls, <laughs> okay? I don't, I look at odds, all right? You have to, and you know, and to, Anticipate. anticipate. Mm-hmm. You have to anticipate your crime. You know, you have to, you know, have the balls to do your crime. You have to come all the way to me. You have to leave a deposit. You're going to pay to kill me, really? You're going to pay yeah. to arm me? Like, ah, my ways now. Don't worry. I'm, yeah. I'm, I got this. Yeah. But this is why I can tell the girls, deposit, deposit, deposit. I mean, no deposit, no date. And since 80% of the gentlemen are okay with the deposit, the 20% can go to bed. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me deal with the 80% that have no problem. And you, since you have a problem, well, go have a problem somewhere else. Thank you. You know? <laughs> yeah. But you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe I'm too French. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now we, we talked a little bit about porn before. You said that you did a softcore thing, but you've never considered doing actual porn, right? No, I would have not be a good candidate. I don't think so. No, yeah, why is no. that? Because I'm already awkward in front of a camera. I look mm. very awkward. It's not, you know, it's not something I'm really natural at. Like, I don't like posing. I, more power to the model. I think it's actually a crazy difficult job because yeah, it's, it's so easy. simple mm-hmm. that it's difficult. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. I, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm just not good at just staying there, static. You know, I'm mm-hmm. very animated, as you can see. So it's mm-hmm. super hard for me to, it's almost an effort. Yeah. Yeah, because you have to open up the camera. You have to be aware of the camera because it's not about the experience itself. It's about creating a fantasy for the viewers. So, sure. yeah, it's a very different. So even right now, pointing at me right now, like something pointing at me mm-hmm. is versus a one-on-one, you know, like because it's yeah. intimate, the sex. So right now having something while I have sex, being close up and I would be disturbed. As as I would be disturbed, you would see it on my face and I would not be a, doing a good scene yeah. since I would feel awkward. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. you can see when I'm awkward, you mm-hmm. know, when I feel awkward on my face. So yeah. I would not be like a, a pretty porn star to look at. So I don't yeah. think it was a route for me to take. But one-on-one, oh yeah, I am a porn star. Oh my God, I do all kind of uh, hand hands. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So what do you think that you bring to the table that like has brought you such a big clientele? 
Like, what do men love the most about spending time with you? Oh, because in a way, they, they like the, the therapy side. I'm kind of a pra- practitioner. I can call myself a lot of names. I like the sex artist, even though I get challenged on that. Come on. If you express your skills in you know, a creative way, you're an artist. Mm-hmm. Period. So this yeah. is what I bring. Just the, the way I make my dates is very unique. The guys are usually telling me it was pretty spectacular, you mm-hmm. know? So it's it's an erotic show. You book my show and uh, I am going to blow your mind. And it's custom to every single one. So it's never the same show. Mm. Does that make sense? And it's fun for me too. So, we, okay. So you say that you do an erotic show. I really like that term. What what does that mean? Can you give me maybe an example yes, of one? It's, it's, it's all like, you know, like a... But the, from the music and I would use their, their dick as a microphone and I start singing for them with eye contact <laughs> and like like I'm a complete like like sex clown in a way and then I, you, you, all kind of stuff I have a lira so I would you know go upside down put their dick in my mouth and just like really like oh turn. wow yeah, really like, yes it's all kind of stuff like that I'm a gymnast so I would you know kind of show off I have a pole so I would do you know all kind of acrobatic so it goes crescendo with my date. They're like, just like mind blown by the end. Do you That's know what I mean? Great. Yeah, That's great. That's really impressive. Things. I do lots of things. Yeah. I have a VR experience. So you pretty much, um, there is some guys that don't want the full service, uh-huh. you know, at all. Like they just want, you know, the intimacy, sensual rub, you know, or like just, just somebody to talk to really. Yeah. You know? So those ones I, I came up with the idea. Listen. That makes Oops. sense then why would you would want to entertain clients at your house because you have all of those tools there to use yes. to put on this like show. But I That's super it. cool. I've never heard of anybody doing anything like but that. Yeah, because I try to, you know, go with the time and innovate and, and yeah. you know, like be a little bit in the new school because old school is cool, but new school is better, you know. So I put the VR, I have about 25 they can choose from. And then, so it's interactive because now they, it's almost like a 40 experience because mm-hmm. They're submerged in there. They mm-hmm. wish the porn star at this point. So what they see, I see. Mm-hmm. So I, I pretty much, you know, simultaneously. I hate this word. I hate this word. Simu- at the Simulation. same time. Simulation. Not at the same time. Simultaneously. Oh, simultaneously. <gasps> did you did it. Good job. <laughs> Wow, that's really cool. I mean, you kind of like do like a Cirque du Soleil yeah, Cirque like du Soleil. sex oh, yeah. experience. That's why it was cool. <laughs> I, I kind of like want to see this. This sounds really cool. A lot of people want to see this. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. I'm just, you don't, you don't like ever want to do, I mean, you know, you don't be a point, you, you don't like have like a OnlyFans or something where yeah, some people want to be. I'm thinking about it. I don't know. I'm torn. I'm torn because I'm so private. So then going public like yeah, this. Yeah, that's true. You know, and then, uh, oh, I don't know. And the, 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 the time consuming also, it's very time consuming. They're very demanding. Yeah. You know, the the, 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 the subscribers, they really yeah. want more, more, more. I can see on my Instagram, they don't even pay. They want more, more, more. It's free. Yeah. So I can only, only imagine when it's, you know, uh, mm-hmm. when you, you make them pay. Um, I'm thinking about it. I'm really tempted but I want to do kind of maybe a story time one you know where it's not like sex or maybe sometimes but you pay more I don't know I don't know we see I don't yeah. know I don't know but uh, my clients we can have a, a recording session so mm-hmm. they can record they have to be in full frame at all time mm-hmm. because I don't want to be on your porn like I don't want them to use the content suddenly so they have to be in at whole time in the frame. Mm-hmm. There is no POV. Gotcha. No up, no that that, like that, that makes no. sense because if they can cut their own face out, exactly. then they can sell it without the repercussions of putting themselves out there, but they put you out there. Yeah. Exactly. So that makes sense. That's crazy. So I'm a personal person. I'm like, you're personally little. No, that makes sense to me. I mean, I was talking, I had Cinnamon Love on and she does a lot of in-person sex work and she was saying that she definitely prefers that to doing, you know, like content platforms like OnlyFans or something mm-hmm. like that. She's like, I really shine in that one-on-one intimate experience with somebody like that's where I'm at and he's and she's like and it's true the upkeep of like an OnlyFans um accounts a lot of work you know you people you could talk to you got to sell them stuff you got to record it you got to edit it you got to publish it you got to get paperwork on other people if you're working with them so it makes sense to me that that you know it's faster yeah it's 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 just faster less headache for sure and Mm -hmm. then I I personally do enjoy the the company of yeah I'm the companion bounder of the company as well. I have to, otherwise, you know, it takes two to tango. Yeah. It does take two to tango. Yeah. So. 
So um, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, you did the Softway Underbelly video, which is how we found you. And I know that he gets a lot of views on his videos. So what was that experience like? What was the response to the video like? And did it change your life in any way? For sure. For sure. So, okay. So first step, I uh, I am the one who contacted him. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, as an escort, I'm going to look into escort stories and mm-hmm. I, I found his channel. And it was some story that really marked me. You know, like they were really sad, extra sad. Some, it was a successful story where the girl really gets out of the street. She gets her job. And so I was looking for more happy story, but it was none. It was a lot of, uh, you know, highlighting uh, maybe the dark side of the business, Mm -hmm. you know? I'm like, wait, wait, wait. In life, we have the dark, but we also have the light. So Mm -hmm. they need to hear a happy story. If there is really, really a happy story that needs to be told on this this channel so people can actually inspire themselves, like, look, girls, you can do it better. You can do exactly like me, but better, with more class. The, 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 The street is the bottom anyway, you know? So level up, you know, at least get a hotel, get yourself a computer, go on the internet. You know, plus the internet is cleaning kind of the street in a way, you know, when you don't have to actually hustle in the street, it's kid real common now. Mm-hmm. They call it the blade. Would you imagine going to work to something that is called the blade? Well, but not me. Okay? That's what they call, they call the working blade. on skid row. Mm-hmm. They, call it, they call it on, on the blade. It's crazy. It's a very intense word. It's a very violent yeah. word. Yeah. Uh, I go to a sweet, not to the blade. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like, the, you know, so I'm like, okay, if. Because I've been talking and inspiring all my life, but not on like a big, big scale. So I'm like, okay, maybe it's time. Mm-hmm. You know, if this, this channel needs to be inspired by me, it's on there, you know? So I went on there, inspired first not to take drugs because drugs is going to fuck you up, mm-hmm. you know? So this is what really made me successful in a way and where I have my head on my shoulder is not to take drugs. Mm-hmm. I'm not perfect. You know, I like to, to drink. I like my weed. You know, I will experiment here and there. But uh, the the cocaine, everything that, uh, ketamine, everything that is addicting, meth, mm-hmm. definitely not crack, everything that you can truly do something crazy mm-hmm. in order to have, I kept myself really away from because at the brothel, at the Bernie Ranch, go back to Bernie Ranch, it was a lot of that. Mm-hmm. And you should see the girls when they don't have it, the withdrawal, everything. So they show me what I don't want to be. Now, um, let's go back. So we were, where, 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 where? software on the belly. So I'm going, girls, don't take drugs. It's not going to serve you. But then the video takes off, but it's not at all for the views I did this video. It was not even close to for the views. It was not to be viral. It was not to be famous. It was not some, nothing like that. It was like, some people need to be saved. They need to hear, like, do this better. Get the fuck out of the blade. Get the fuck out of there. Mm-hmm. You know, catch the lemons, opportunities, and hop on the train that says paradise. That's what I wanted to inspire. Mm-hmm. You know, everything else went really after it was secondary. It was not planned at all. It just kind of came as a bomb. Organic bomb. <laughs> yeah. Did you get any people that reached out to you that said that they saw the interview and that helped oh my God, them like elevate? Like thousands at this point. Like really? thousands at this point. It's thousands. I don't know how to keep up with the DMs, with the, the emails. They're finding me from left to right. I mean, it's, it's almost scary. I had to adjust to it for a minute. Yeah. Like when it first happened, like I'm like, ooh, wait. Because I have clients doing that. I have a bomb of, of, of clients. Are you available? Are you available? And they not have that. Like, phew. So I'm like, ooh, how am I going to juggle between the, the two right now? Yeah. So I kind of like... Almost like put it on the download. I would not even read the comments. I was not involved. Like I really, I was focused, you know, my clients doing whatever I did before. Mm-hmm. I didn't let that interview really change my dynamic. Mm-hmm. And now it is slowly but surely. And I'm trying to like, okay, go back to your dynamic because this is what you like. Mm-hmm. You know, I love interviews because people can use the information. Mm-hmm. That's why I do interviews. Use the information. Mm-hmm. I, went, I took one for the team for you. You know, that's what I'm here for. The yeah. views, of, you know. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you, you know, inspired quite a few people. Jesus Christ. Uh, from different countries, literally. And like greeting from Senegal, greeting from, you know, Nicaragua, and greeting from Bangladesh. Maybe you should do like a, like a web series it. on like how to be a successful escort. Eventually, I, I'm thinking do about... Do a workshop. Eventually, I really am thinking about it. Again, I am getting close to retirement, you know, really. Like it's it's... it's I smell it. It's it's there. Mm-hmm. I I did great. I did good for myself financially. I'm set. I'm good. I'm good to go. So now it's the next chapter, you know. And once Francesca, I can leave her 
aside and not make her life all the time. You know, I have to do my hair for her. I have to yeah. do my nails for her. Yeah. Like Francesca takes a lot of my time. Like people, are you available, Francesca? Not me, me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which I have a great social life. Don't get me wrong. Like I know how to juggle, but I had to really know how to separate the two. It was yeah. such a mind fuck. Yeah. But yeah, you create a persona and everybody wants that persona. Right. And you, you don't exist no more. Yeah. You almost like a... A, a double personality in a way. Yeah. So I had to switch, know how, I know how to switch Francesca on and off. If I can completely switch her off, I have so much time for me. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Like it's so time consuming to be Francesca. Yeah. Ah, I mean, God. especially these people are pay spending a lot of money to spend time with this character that you've developed. And so you have to be on, you can't really be yourself. But yeah, in a way, I, I, I said, you know, I really have to switch into this extra actress and role play and everything if they really are yeah. that type of gentleman. Fucking up on like an aerial ring and like, I mean, that's a lot of work. <laughs> I love it though. You know, it tells me, it keeps me in shape, you know. Yeah. It does, it does keep me in shape. You know, they ask me like, like, what do you, what is your routine? I'm like, work. I don't know, orgasms, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I yeah. love it. Well, thank you so much for coming, Frenchie. This was really cool. Um, it was a pleasure. I, I love you for being, you know, an adult with me, approaching the subject with class and not, you know, a, a, you just thank you for being you. You're like, to me, you're an icon. Oh, I really you. wanted to highlight that. Uh, honor to be here, honestly, big, big time. It was like super exciting for me to be here oh my god i look forward to it well thank you yeah i kept it like a secret on my instagram for me i'm like i'm not gonna tell them yeah they don't deserve it <laughs> drum well, roll, drum I, roll. I, I i'm so <laughs> glad, happy that you were happy to be here and once again i'm so sorry about the broken air conditioning <laughs> no it's cool it's cool i got my uh you know almost my sauna my free sauna yeah <laughs> No I got the toxins out. <laughs> <laughs> I just need a shower now, but and take care of my little broken puppy in the car, making sure he's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope that that works out. You know, thing. Yeah. yeah. So you see, you you seem to have a really good heart. There's not a lot of people like that out there. No, so keep surprised. doing keep doing what you do. Why are you on earth to have, you know, uh, no heart actually? Like it's your journey. Yeah. Well, have heart. It's a journey that is long, so you might as well practice on that. Give a bottle of water to somebody that is thirsty. Come on now. You know? Yeah. 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 Money, no. They, they kept asking me, like, do you, you want to do a go for me account? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. This is the last thing he needs. He needs love. Mm -hmm. You know? He needs little cards and written. He needs a hug. He needs that. He needs somebody to believe in him. Yeah. Which he probably he's hasn't an, he's had amazing. in a long time. He's the shit, this little, this little kid. I... Every time he, 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 he talks, I, I learn more from him. I'm like, oh my, I'm so charmed. And that's funny because in a very strange way, in another life, different situation, he would have been a good match. That's the worst about that. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. A good match. He opens door and he sings. Oh. He sings for me. <laughs> how? How? Yeah. My life is full of that. Yeah. You, you. you definitely, um, you are definitely living life to the fullest. That is for sure. And you seem to be somebody that's always got a story to tell. So can you tell our listeners um, where they can find you online? Yes. Pocket sized Frenchie. Easy. Pocket like the pocket sized Frenchie. Little me. Just And that's your Instagram, right? That's my Instagram and that's it. That's all I have. Right? That's all you have. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, now it's enough. I don't want to overwhelm myself with Twitter. And I, I, I just get the platform all the time anyway. So, yeah, yeah, like I, I get the platform. So people, yeah. I, I literally have a group of haters dedicated for that, just for that. It's 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 crazy. But in a way, if they, they wouldn't, I'd be surprised. I'd be like, where are they at? You know, like I have no hater. Yeah. Huh? They say that, you know, you've made it when you have haters, right? <laughs> don't. Shit. Stop. Well, thank you again for coming on. And um, you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. And um, as of the time of this interview, I know I say this every time, but I'm still on TikTok. Who knows if I will be <laughs> tomorrow or any other day, but uh, Holly Randall unfiltered right now. You can find lots of like little short clips from my podcast interviews on there. And then, of course, if you want to support this podcast, go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, where you can watch us uh, sweat our balls off live in an, an air-conditioned studio um, <laughs> weeks and weeks before the episode actually comes out 
on the free platforms. Thank you guys so much for watching. Frenchie, thank you again. You're the best. Thank you. We'll see you guys next week.